welcome to the 2022 Statistics Lecture Series. Uh, today, we are joined by Tansha Wu. Um, she will be presenting on reliability analysis. And uh, we will ask that if there are any questions to please hold them to the end. Um, and with that, uh, Dr. Wu. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, welcome to our statistics lecture. In this lecture, I will present reliability analysis, which include intra-class correlation coefficient and the kappa coefficient. So why do we need reliability? If the reliability of many instruments or assessment tools is not established, research will not be able to draw conclusions about the general liability to their research. Reliability is defined as the extent to which measurements can be replicated. It reflects not only degree of correlation, but also agreement between measurements. There are four type of, types of reliability. One is interrelated reliability. It reflects the variation in measurements taken by two or more readers who measure the same group of subjects. One is intra-reader reliability. It reflects variation in measurements taken by one reader at two or more different times on the same subject. The third one is test-retest reliability. It reflects variation in measurements taken by an instrument on the same subject under the same condition. The fourth one is internal consistent reliability, which we will not be discussed in this lecture. The method used for, for reliability analysis depends on measurement scales. There are four types of measurement scales. This can be categorized into two, into categorical scale and continuous scale. The categorical scale includes nominal and ordinal. The continuous scale includes in the interval and ratio. Therefore, for continuous scale, which also includes the ordinal scale with five or more categories, we will be use interclass correlation coefficient or ICC to evaluate reliability. For categorical scale, we use kappa coefficient. In the first part of this lecture, we'll introduce interclass correlation coefficient for data measured on continuous scale. I focus on interreader reliability, introduce six form of ICC based on Schroes and Flex 1979 paper. And then some forms of ICC can, uh, are used for interreader and test retest reliability. For interreader reliability, Shroud and Flex define six forms of ICC, and they are represented as two numbers in the parentheses. The first number refers to the model. One represents one-way model, two represents two-way random model, and three represents two-way mixed model. The details of three models will be described in the next next the two slides. The second number refers to the type. One represents a single measurement. This means the measurement from a single reader is used as an assessment base in actual application. K represents the average measurements of K readers. This means the average value of K readers is used as an assessment base in actual application. In the clinical study, a single measurement is commonly used. Therefore, in the following lecture, I focus on the single measurement. ICC is defined as a ratio of between subject vari variability to total variability. The total variability includes between subject variance components and the error components and the error variance. The closer this ratio is to one, the higher the reliability. 
when ICC equal to one, it indicates perfect reliability. McCraw and one extend to 10 forms of ICC based on model type and definition. The definition include consistency and absolute agreement. If you use statistical program SPSS, you get 10 forms of ICC. The model definition is based on experimental design. In experimental design, if each reader is rated by multiple readers, the readers are seen to be, a, to be run, randomly assigned to subjects. And all subjects are rated by same number of readers. Then one way random model should be used. In an experiment, if each subject is measured by the same set of readers and the characters are seen to be a random subset of all possible readers, then two way random model should be used. The results from this kind of experiment can be generalized to any readers who possesses the same characteristics as the involved readers. If experiment is designed as each subject is measured by the same set of characters, the characters are the only readers of interest. Then we use two-way mixed effect model. In the model, the subject is random and the reader is fixed. The results from this kind of design only represent the reliability of the involved readers and cannot be generalized to others. Now, let's look at the experimental design for the three models. Assuming the readers S includes all possible readers and the readers are independent. In the experimental design, the subjects are independent and a set of three readers taken, take measurements on each subject under the same condition and in random order. In experiment, in experiment A, the three readers are randomly sampled for each subject. Thus, each subject is rated by different sample of three readers. For this design, we use one-way random model. In experiment B, the three readers are a random subset of all possible readers. Thus, each subject is rated by same set of three readers. For this design, we use two-way random model. In experiment C, the three readers are the only readers of interest. Thus, each subject is rated by same set of three readers. For this design, we use two-way mixed model. For experiment A and B, each reader has the same probability to be chosen from the reader population. And for experiment C, the three readers are deliberately chosen. And in one-way model, each reader does not read all subjects. Therefore, readers are nested within subjects. And in two-way model, each, sub each reader read reads all subjects. Therefore, readers are crossed with subject. ICC calculation is based on ANOVA. For one-way model, we use one-way ANOVA. And for, for two-way random and two-way mixed model, we use two-way ANOVA. The, these are the, the one-way ANOVA and two-way ANOVA table. In the one-way ANOVA, the total variation is split up into between subject variation and within subject variation, because the reader and readers are nested within the subject. In the two-way ANOVA, the total 
variation is, is split, split up into between subject with between reader and the error because readers are crossed with subject. In ANOVA, we can do the two to do the subject test based on the F ratio. And in the two way ANOVA, we also can do Reuters effect test using, using Reuters mean square divided by the error mean square. This, is, this test is also called a systematic error test. This test is equivalent to paired T test. SCC calculation is based on based on one way and based on ANOVA. For one way random model, we use one way ANOVA. For, for two way random and the mixed model, we use two way ANOVA. These are the table, the, the ANOVA tables for one way ANOVA and the two way ANOVA. In one way ANOVA, the, the total variation is split up into between subject and the within subject. For the two-way ANOVA, the variation is the total variation is split, split up into between subject within between subject between reader and the error. For two-way design, the reader are crossed with subject. And here we can use the F ratio to do between to, to the subject effect test and the reader effect test. For the, the reader effect test is also called, called a systematic error test, which is equivalent, equivalent to paired T test for two readers. These are the three formulas for the three models. Noticing the difference between ICC21 and ICC31. And ICC31 includes this part. If the reader's variation mean square for reader is much bigger than error mean square, and then the ICC21 would be smaller than ICC31, indicating the ICC21 accounting for systematic error. Systematic error. And also, systematic error can reduce the ICC21. McCraw and Y extend to 10 forms of ICC by adding definition. Five from the ICC for single measurement and five from the ICC for the means of the characters. For both two way random and mixed model, effect models, there are two definitions. One is called absolute agreement. It contains if different readers assign the same score to the same subject. The other one is called consistency, which contains if readers score to the same group of subjects are correlated in an active manner. In other words, consistency only consider correlation and absolute agreement consider systematic error. Based on McGraw and Wang's definition, ICC21 is for absolute agreement ICC, and the ICC31 is for consistency agreement. These are the five from the ICC for single measurement. measurement. Based, based on McCraw and one's definition, and uh, for the for, for Krauss and the Flace, one way random model is for absolute agreement, and a two way random model is for absolute, also for absolute agreement. But the mixed model is for consistency. And they extend, added this to two forms. One is for assist, uh, consistency for random model and absolute agreement for mixed model. Let's look at the yeah. Look, look at the dependent design and uh, this, this, this slide show how to select the correct ICC form for inter-read reliability. To select the ICC type depends on the measurement in actual application for single measurement or for means of care measurement. 
Selecting ICC model depends on its permanent design. Selecting the ICC definition depends on whether absolute agreement or consistency between readers to be more important. For these three designs, for the one with ANOVA, there's only one choice, use the ICC 1-1, and for, which is for absolute agreement. For two-way random and two-way mixed model, if you think absolute agreement is important, we should use ICC 2-1 formula. And if you think the consistency is more important, we use ICC 3-1 formula. If the experiment involves two readers, we can use these three methods to evaluate reliability. Why is the Pearson correlation coefficient? It shows whether or how strongly the two paired measurements are related. The other one is blend and, and the Edmund plot plot analysis. It describes agreement between the two measurements using a scatter plot. The y-axis shows the difference between the two readers, and the y-axis presents the average of these measures. The other one method is paired t-test used to evaluate the agreement or readers bias. This slide shows the raw data for the, for the three data set. Each data set is an example of, of two readers giving ratings, giving ratings for eight subjects. Here we treat data set A as a standard. Compare with data set B with data set A. For, for each subject, the difference between read one and read two is the same for every subject. For every subject. And the data set a and B have also had same means of the eight subject for each readers. This one and this one. Um, but the data set B has a smaller standard standard deviation, indicating data set B has a small between subject variation. Data set C is generated by the data set A for reader. Reader one's score in data C is same as reader one's score in data set A. And reader two's score is equal to, in data set C is equal to reader two's score in data set A minus 15. Therefore, data set C has a systematic error. So in summary, the difference between data set A and B is data set B has smaller within subject variation. And the compare data set the difference between data set C and the A is data C has systematic error. And for these three data sets the design, just for de demonstration, the design can be one-way random, two-way random, or mixed model. Since these three data set include two, two readers, we can use these three methods to to do reliability analysis. The upper three, upper three scatter plot for the shows the correlation between read one and read two. Compare with data set A and B, we found the Pearson correlation is smaller in data set B, indicating the weak, weak correlation between, um, for data set B. Therefore, the, the also, this also means that small width between subject variation lead to small, lead to weak correlation. And for compared to data set C and A, they have exactly same correlation coefficient, indicating the Pearson correlation does not consider systematic error. Here's a three scatter plot for, <coughs> for blend, for blend and outman plots. The y-axis is for the difference between the two readers, and the y the y x and the x-axis for the average for the two readers. Data set A and B show the same agreement. <coughs> same agreement. And no bias because this num. This does 
is stupid by round as a zero line. And the flow delta set C, <coughs> the plot shows a clear bias. <coughs> the pair of the T tests show the delta set A and B that no significant difference between the two readers. But the significant difference <coughs> between the two readers for delta set C. This, <coughs> this slide shows a two way ANOVA, which can be the, the mean square can be used for calculate ICC21 and ICC31. Here we just want to <coughs> point out. Compare with data set A and the B, and the B has a smaller between subject variation and the is not a significant. And look at the, the mean square for between subject variation, mean square for between subject is much smaller compared with data set A. And compare with data C and A, data set C shows significant greater effect indicating the systematic error. And also the mean square for, for reader is much bigger than in data set A. <laughs> the pond, the pond estimates of ICC can be easily calculated based on the mean square from ANOVA, but the 95 comes in the ball is not enough. And usually statistical software is used for ICC calculation. This table pre presents the, the six from the ICC using R package psych for the three data set. The upper three rows are for the single measurement ICC. The type is single measurement. And the lower three rows are for the means of the two readers. These numbers show that the ICC of single measurement is always lower than the corresponding average measurement of k readers. Compare with data set B and A. That is the P and A. The data set P shows smaller ICC, indicating that the that the that the between sub small between subdivision result in small ICC. And this ICC are even not significant from, from zero because the lower limit are never lower limits are negative. And compared with data C and A, we found for consistency ICC, they are same, same, they are same, indicating the consistency does not consider systematic error. And for the absolute agreement, ICC 1, 1 and 2, 1, these two form, and the, the ICC in data set C are smaller than in data set A indicating the CCD medical error reduce the ICC, reduce the absolute agreement ICC, but has no effect on the consistency. And also found here for the ICC 2.1, this ICC is not even significant from zero. And also we found for data set A and B because this two data set has no significant systematic error. And the ICC and are very close. For the so how to select the correct ICC form for the intra-class, intra-intra and test retest the reliability. For the model, we should use the two-way mixed model. Two-way mixed model because for intra-class intra reader reliability. It is not reasonable to generalize one reader's scores to a large population of readers. For test the readers reliability, the, re the repeated measurements cannot be regarded as randomized 
samples. For the, as for the definition, we should use absolute agreement because systematic error should be considered. As for the type, for if the single application, a single measurement is used in the real application, we should use ICC21. If the mean of the key measurements is used in real application, we should use ICC 2K. So how to interpret ICC? This table lists the two criteria, two criteria which are both are highly cited. Mm, we can use either of them or either, any of them. To report the ICC, we need to not just report the point estimates, we also need to report confidence interval and the form. And also we need to report the ICC for the variables in the form that will be used for model testing. For example, if a box comes transform, transform the variable, so like, like such as log, natural log transformation, if the transformed variable will be used in data analysis, the ICC calculated from the transformed variable needed to be reported. To interpret ICC should be based on the 95% comments interval. For example, if the ICC is estimated as 0 0.85 and the 95 comments interval is 0 0.53 to 0 0.93, and then the level of reliability should be interpreted as moderate to, to excellent. In summary, we <coughs> introduce the uh, inter-class correlation coefficient, which is defined as between subject reliability divided the total reliability. The components of total reliability depend on the model. And to select, to select the ICC reliability should be based on the model type and definition. If the experiment include, include the two readers or just the two repeated measures, and then we can use PSN correlation coefficient, blend, and ultimate plus and paired t test. We should be aware of the between subject variation. The small between subject variation can, can result in small ICC. Therefore, to compare ICC, between subject variation should be considered. The, the systematic error can be tested using the ratio in the, in the two-way ANOVA. For interpreter reliability, the systematic error is usually caused by reader's bias. For interpreter or test retest reliability, the systematic error is usually caused by practice effect. We, should, we need to do from the ANOVA to check the between subject variation, the systematic error, especially if you get small ICC or wide confidence interval. In the second part of this lecture, I'm, I present the kappa coefficient for data based measured on categorical scale. I focus on Cohen's kappa, introduce single kappa and weighted kappa for ordinal scale. Here's an example of two readers giving ratings for 39 subjects on a binary scale. The results are summarized as a two by two contingency table. Based, these tables show that the two readers agree on positive for 22 subjects and agree on negative for 11 subjects. Therefore, we can calculate the proportion of observed agreement or the percent agreement as 20, 22 plus 11 divided by 39. So why don't we use percent agreement? Cohen pointed out, point out there is likely to be some levels of agreement among readers when they do not know the correct answer, but are merely guessing. And a certain number of the guesses would be congruent, which is called chance agreement. The reliability is that should account for the chance agreement. Therefore, Cohen divided this kappa as the proportion of observed agreement minus proportion of chance expected 
gradient. Divided by one minus the proportion of chance is better gradient. I'll use uh, this formula. To calculate the, <coughs> the Cohen's COPA, we need to find, find PE and the PO. For P for the for the proportional is better gradient the PE. The calculation is based on two hypotheses. The readers are entirely independent, and the readers guess, guess on every subject at the reads similar to marginal proportion. In this, in this example, for the positive rating, the marginal proportion for read one is the total number, total number of positive rating, 22 plus 4 equal to 26 divided by 39. For the rate two, the marginal proportion is, is 24 divided by 39. Therefore, we can calculate the, the chance expected number agreements as the total aim times the marginal, <coughs> marginal proportion rating for, for rate one and the marginal proportion marginal proportion rating for, for read two, and then we get 16. For negative rating, in this, we can get, in the same way we can get the number for the negative rating as five. And then we can calculate the PE as 16 plus five divided by 39. As for the, above, <coughs> the proportion of the observed agreement is equal to 22 plus 11, divided by 39. Therefore, the kappa, by substitute the PE and the PO into the formula, we get the kappa. And the kappa is ranging from negative one to one, usually falls between zero and one. For kappa close to, close to one, indicate high reliability or, or high agreement. The weighted kappa is only used for ordinary skill with three or more categories. In unweighted kappa, all disagreements are treated equally. For in weighted kappa, the disagreements are allowed to be weighted differently. For example, in ordinary one, two, three, four, you will denote the D as the absolute difference in reading between read one and read two. When D equal to zero, indicate agreements. One is assigned to wait. For D greater than zero, indicate disagreement. In unweighted kappa, <coughs> zero is assigned to wait for all D greater than zero. For linear agreement weights, when D equal to one, we <coughs> two third is assigned to the weight. When d equal to two, weight equal to one third, and d equal to three, d, the weight equal to zero. The weight, the agreement weights usually is defined as a matrix, symmetric, symmetric matrix, and all the diagonal for the for the agreement, the off diagonal for the <coughs> for the disagreement, like this one. This all for the d equal to one, and this for d equal to two, and here the for d equal to zero. In general, <coughs> the agreements, agreements which defined as a symmetric matrix and diagonal elements are all one for disagree for agreement. All diagonals is are either zero or less than one for different levels of disagreement. In the unweighted kappa, all of diagonal elements are zero. There are two commonly used forms of weighting. One is the linear weighting, use this formula. The other one is quadratic weighting, and the weight is calculated use this formula. In the ordinary, <laughs> the ordinary variable is treated as continuous, the readers are fixed. The quadratic weighted kappa is identical to ICC31. This table presents 
four weight metrics. Four weight metrics and for two ordinal scale and two forms of weight of weighting. Compared with the linear weighting with quadratic weighting, we found the linear, the quadratic weighting is higher than linear weights. But this is not necessary. You can have the quadratic cover greater than linear cover. This will be shown in the following example. And here's also found the, the, the category score has an effect on the weights. Therefore, therefore the coding, the ordinary coding should indicate the distance between the different categories. Next, I'm going to introduce two index, prevalence index and the bias index for binary scale. Prevalence index is defined as a the difference between agreement proportion, like in this example, 40 minus 37 divided by 100 is the prevalence index. Bias index is defined as the absolute difference between the disagreement proportion. Like in this example, the bias index is 12 minus 11 divided by 100. This table shows three data set for the two ratings on 100, or two readers given ratings on, on 100 subjects. In which the data set A as a standard, compared with data B and A, the data set B has a high prevalence index, 75 minus two. <clears throat> the index is 0 0.73. And that is it C has a high bias index, 23 minus zero divided by 100 is 0 0.23. And these three data sets has the same proportion, same proportion of observed agreement, 0 0.77. Now we will see how the prevalence index and the bias index influence the cover. This table shows the, so the prevalence index, and the bias index, and the kappa for the three data set. Compared with B and A, the difference is B has a higher prevalence index, and the kappa is much smaller than in A. This indicates so when there is a large prevalence index, kappa is lower than when the prevalence index is low or zero. High kappa is equivalent to the, to the low between subject variation, which is similar to the effect of the between subject variability on ICC. Compare with data C and A, the data C has a high bias index, and the kappa is much is is slightly is slightly bigger than than kappa in A. This indicates when there is a large bias, kappa is higher than that than when when bias is low or absent. Higher Bias index indicates the disagreements are asymmetric. <clears throat> we can do the symmetry, symmetry test for, for bias. And as a bias, the, the, the effect of bias to cover is different from the bias on the ICC. When you have the when you when you have the high bias or higher index, a higher prevalence index, we can use prevalence adjust and the bias adjusted cover, P-A-B-A-K, which is calculated using this formula. Here the C is for the number of the category. When you see equal to two for binary scale, the formula is simplified as this. And therefore for this three data set, the adjusted cover 
of theorem is 0 0.54. This means for the adjusted kappa is only based on the proportion of observed agreement. Also, how to calculate the kappa for k greater than two? We may know that this the kappa can be used for two or more readers. However, this permanent design for this kappa is not commonly used. In the permanent design, the reader are randomly sampled from a large population of readers, with each subject rated by different sample of k reader, which is similar as one-way random model ICC. For Cohen's cover, the permanent design as the readers are deliberately chosen and fixed, with each subject rated by a same k readers which is similar as for the two-way mixed model ICC. For this design, if we to calculate the, the kappa for k equal to two, we use this following two method. One is to calculate the arithmetic, arithmetic means of kappa estimate of all reader, of all reader pairs. Second is to calculate the ICC 31 for ordinary scale with three or more categories by treating the ordinary scale as continuous, which is equivalent to quadratic weighted kappa. The next example will show how to, to do this calculation. Here's an example of first example of three readers taking readings on 30 subjects for binary scale one, two, three, four. The results the data are summarized as three four by four contingency table. Contingency table. Based on this table, we can calculate we calculate the ICC for the three for the uh, calculate the three couples. Unweighted kappa linear, weighted kappa, and the quadratic kappa. For data set for the pair one two and two three. We found the the three kappas trend is quadratic kappa is greater than linear kappa and greater than unweighted kappa, but this trend is opposite for pair one three. This is because for this three pair they have the different proportion of observed agreement. This number shows that. The weighted kappa is not always greater than unweighted kappa. And the quadratic weighted kappa is not always greater than linear weighted kappa. The weighted kappa tends to improve kappa with low observed agreement. Here we also calculate the ICC31 by treating ordinary scale as continuous scale. And this number are same as the quadratic kappa. Quadratic kappa. And the table three shows the means of the three kappa. For quadratic kappa, we can use the ICC31 from, from three readers, calculate from three readers. To interpret kappa, we can use we can use this to either of these two criteria. To report the kappa, we needed to report point estimates and not just point estimates, also confidence intervals and symmetry test. If you use the weighted kappa, we need to report weights. When PI or BI is high, we may <coughs> include the ordinal data in a contingency table. It is more important to report 95 ICC, not the significance test for null hypothesis kappa equal to zero. For kappa test, for significant kappa test, that you can you reject kappa equal to zero. But if, if you have the confidence interval like this, 0 0.41, 0 0.8, you can reject kappa less than or equal to 0 0.4. In summary, Cohen's we introduce the Cohen's kappa 
as use this formula, which account for the chance inspector agreement. When we use the weighted cover for ordinary scale, we need to know this. We when we don't have, it's necessary to have quadratic weighted cover greater than linear weighted cover and greater than simple cover. The weighted cover tends to improve the cover with lower observed agreement. And also the category coding has effect on the weights. And the quadratic weighted cover is identical to ICC 3.1 by treating ordinary scale as continuous. We also introduce the two paradox is associated with the with cover. So when there's a large prevalence index, cover is lower than when the prevalence index is low or zero. And when there's large bias, the cover is higher than when bias is low or absent. Here are the references. These are the references. So Thank you very much. And for the question, um, you can email me or call me. Thank you, Dr. Wu. Um, and yes, as, as Dr. Wu said, if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to email her or uh, you can reach out to me as well and I'll put you in contact. Um, so thank you to everyone and have a, a great Friday.